So, in the Psalms, in 139 verses 13 and 14, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Isn't that a beautiful verse? That's David. And he's just talking to God about how amazing we are that we were created. And he's recognizing that God created us and he knows us. And he made us from inside our mother's womb. He created us special. It's a very intimate, close relationship. And I love that relationship that we have with God. Amen. So, and God looks down on us and he's pleased with us and he looks at each one of us as we are beautiful people inside and outside. But, we don't see that ourselves. We don't see ourselves the same way that God sees us. We, are, we see ourselves differently than God sees us, right? We don't see ourselves the same. But, we don't live our lives like we're renewed. Remember we learned from the sermon, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are baptized and we become renewed, reborn, right? But we don't live that way. We don't act that way. We don't act reborn. Some people live their life the same way they did before they accepted Jesus Christ, after they accept Jesus Christ. They just continue that lifestyle. But today my focus on my sermon is this passage. And I want to focus on God's Word and how we see ourselves. When I look at myself, excuse me, so, it's a fact, excuse me, it, you're, the more negative you see yourself and live your life, the more negative you will feel about yourself. And the more negative you will feel about life. It's a fact. The more positive you see yourself, the more positive you see your life, the more positive you will feel about yourself, and the more positive you will feel about your life. You know the famous saying, your glass, if you look at a glass and it's half full or half empty. So here's my example. If you look at this and you can think, ugh, oh, my glass is half empty. There's only this much left. But some people go, yes, I have a lot of water left. Wow, look, it'll quench my thirst. But it's those kind of people that look and think, oh, that's not enough, as opposed to those that think there's a lot left. Those are two different kinds of people. Half empty or half full. That's a famous saying that we have. So many people... When they talk negatively, it's awful to hear people talk negatively because it will steal our joy, for sure. There's no doubt, right? So what you should be saying is, I am blessed, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful. But what you see, most people say is, I have a bad... I'm I'm not good, I don't have any skills, I'm always sick, I'm not attractive. Or maybe they look in the mirror, maybe they say, oh, I'm so old. I'm old. When you see a, per you know, a person that has a great skill, you think, oh, I'm jealous, I wish I had that kind of a skill. I don't have that skill. And I think to myself, I try to practice whenever I'm preaching. I try, like this morning, I did find more and more and more and more wrinkles, maybe a little sad. And I thought, oh, I'm 55. It's 55, and, you know, it's coming. It doesn't matter. I have to, and I have to remember myself, I had to remind myself of my sermon this morning. I had to like shake myself to remember. It's silly. It's so silly because many people, as they age, 
especially men, it's true, they look better when they become older, right? So some people look in the mirror negatively. Or maybe if you're stuck in traffic, you think, ugh, I am so unlucky again today, I'm stuck in traffic. And what you don't understand is that when you're negative, when you start to talk negatively, it will lead you into negative situations. When you're hyper positive, you think, oh, God blesses me every single day, and you look for his blessings constantly in everything you do. It doesn't matter if I have struggles or I'm sick or if I have problems in my marriage. I just pray to God and he will help me. And I'm looking for his blessings because I know that if I have full faith in him, he will pour his blessings out on me every single day, no matter how I feel. It's a different kind of attitude. When you start talking positively and you believe in his power and you believe that he pours his blessings out on you every single day and you believe that he wants you to be happy and he wants you to have a good, successful life, he wants everything for you because he created you, he loves you, he cherishes you, he wants you, he wants what's good for you. If you believe that and you're positive, you will see positive things. You'll be able to start controlling a lot of things in your life, a lot. So don't look for bad things to happen. You need to look for your blessings. You need to say every day, when you look in the mirror, I am <laughs> I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to look in the mirror and say that every single day. When you see yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made every single day and to see your attitude start to change and your faith start to change and you need to say I am renewed in Christ men hang on okay so men you need to say I am young I am energetic I am strong. And women, you need to say, I am young, I have energy, and I am beautiful. You need to say that every day. Women, do not tell your husbands how unattractive you are. And don't say, oh, I'm ugly, I'm old, I'm not pretty anymore. You know, don't talk like that. Don't talk negatively. Don't put that kind of thinking in your head or in your spouse's head. And men, do not stop telling your wife how beautiful your wife is. Women need and want to hear that every single day from their husband. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Women need to hear that. And women, tell your husbands every day, you are strong, you are handsome, you provide well for our family. You're awesome. Every day, tell each other these things. It's wonderful, positive things to tell each other. And we have to learn how to walk in joy. We can't think about joy and talking joyfully. We have to show it. We have to show it to the world in Christ. We have freedom in Christ. In Christ, we are made new, and we are born again, and we are blessed every single day. We need to show the world that we live in joy. We don't talk about it. We don't sing about it only. We live in joy. So meaning, living in joy means our self, our self-identity, our self-picture, so we need to improve and do what God intended for you to be. You need to be what God's true intention for you is. 
You need to love yourself the way that God loves you. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. I'm looking around and thinking God created you. He chose you to be born. He loves you. He cherishes you. And God looks down on you with love as his children. And he loves you. Most of you are parents, right? So you understand that love that you have for your children. It's great. So his is 1,000 times more. So we need to love ourselves as much as God loves us. But we don't. We don't love ourselves. We don't do it. We beat ourselves up every day. And we live without hope. And we live without faith. And we live without trust. And we just live differently. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, in the New Living Translation, it's up here. It's so cool. It says, For we are God's... Who believes that? That we're God's masterpiece. Good. It says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. If you don't love yourself, if you have low self worth, if you have low, you know, low self-esteem, if you look at yourself and you see the problems that you have, you can't do the things that God plans for you, the things he planned a long time ago. And if you believe any negative things about yourself, any of them, like I'm not happy, I'm not skilled, I'm not pretty, I'm not handsome, I'm not able, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You are feeding Satan. You're giving him power. You are. And you will. Satan wants you to feel defeated. He wants you to feel ugly. He wants you to feel like you're worthless. Satan wants you to feel like you have no skills. And he wants you to feel like... He wants you to feel bad about yourself. And he wants you to look around at the world and think, wow, I wish I looked like that. Or I wish I had that house. Or I wish I had that car. Or that, you know, whatever. All these different things. My hus that husband, that wife. I wish I had all these different things. It makes you desire all these other things. And if that happens, where is your joy? Where is your joy? Where? It's gone. He stole it. And you allowed him to steal it. We have to look at the mirror and say, I can, I will, I'm blessed, I know how, I want to serve, I want to do things with joy, I want to be happy, and I will accomplish what you want me to accomplish today and every day from this point on because I'm new in Christ and I'm reborn and I'm, I have freedom in Christ. In my last sermon before, remember I talked about the box thing. I will be happy. I'm beautiful. I can. I have skills. I will love myself. I'm created in God's image. I'm His masterpiece. And then you believe it. You might leave today and feel a little inflated and think, yes, I feel good, I can do this, and then your old self will, Satan's going to remind you, your old self is going to say, eh, not really. I really don't have good skills. I'm really not pretty. I'm getting old. I don't have 
lot of things that I want. I'm not happy. I'm not joyful. All these different things. But you need to be strong in Christ. And you need to remind yourself over and over and over again that you can't be successful and satisfied if you're just walking around every day thinking and talking negative things about yourself. Walking around always feeling deflated with low self-esteem. You can't. You can, in Christ, change the way you think, change the way you feel. You can. But you have to say, I can. And David praised God. David said, I am a masterpiece. Wow. There's nothing ordinary about all of you. You're all special. We all have different fingerprints. Did you know that? There's no two fingerprints that are the same. Did you know twins, identical twins, sister, I have identical twin sisters, right? They're 46 that I raised. They're identical. Identical twins. But their fingerprints are different. Isn't that interesting? Their personalities are opposite, too. They don't even have the same personalities. And when they were born... My, you know, my mother was still alive, and she had them, and she had to take the twins to a hospital two different times because of, oh, to get their footprints checked because they got them mixed up, so they had to go to the hospital to see which was which. And so they wrote that on their shoes and their socks. Like when they give them a bath, they'd be like, oops, we have to go back to the hospital and get their footprints checked again to see which is which. So... And so now I wonder if, if, oh, oh, I want them to check again today because maybe this one's really married to this one and this one's really married to that one. I don't know, but they're both, they're not getting checked anymore. They refuse. But anyway, twins, identical twins have different fingerprints, which is amazing. Imagine what would happen if we said the same thing David said. Imagine if we said, I am a masterpiece. I am wonderfully made. I am not weak. I am strong. I am wor have worth. And I am loved by God. It doesn't mean it's pride. It's confidence. What if you started saying that, talking that way to yourself? Can you imagine what the church could do if we all together became positive in Christ and believed that God has truly blessed us every single day and that this cup is, there's plenty of water in this cup. Don't leave that kind of attitude to the refugees. I mean, you're not be happy with this. They get happy with one meal a day. They're happy and satisfied and joyful. And it's not just them, it's us too. We should have joy all the time in our lives. Can you imagine if we changed our attitudes as a church family, what kind of work we could do out there? For now, many people are not serving. They're not doing God's work because they're busy and they feel bad. And they are negative and they're down. And they think, oh, I'm worthless. I'm tired. You just say, I'm strong. I have energy. I'm ready to serve. I believe in you. I believe that I'm new in Christ and I believe I'm born again. And I want to, I'm willing to change my language. Can you imagine what kind of gospel we could share? We could do so much work out there. But only if we live in joy. Even Sarah, you realize, how old was she when her baby was born? Do you remember? How old? 
Abraham's wife. How old was she? Can you guess? You said 100? 100? 90. Wow, right. How did you know? What? Oh, some game. There's a game. That's a good game then, I guess. Right, so 90. Sarah was 90. Can you imagine... Sarah would have had a baby at 90 years old. But before that, Sarah lived, you know, thinking I'm worthless, failure, I haven't been able to have a baby for many, many years. My husband's been able to have babies with other women, but I can't. I'm no good. I'm old. And then finally, at 90 years old, she thought, wow, I'm worthy. I'm good. God changed and then he changed her name from it's S A R I to S A R A H, Sarah, meaning princess. So when the baby was born, her name was changed. That had to be really inspirational. And she thought, I mean, wow, 90 years old, but then he changed her name to Sarah, which meant princess. Can you imagine how she would feel? She'd probably feel beautiful and successful and worthy. In Proverbs, It says, your word has power over life and death. Words can build you up or words can tear you down. Your words can build up other people or your words can tear down other people. Wives and husbands, wow. They are, they're always... It's like a machine gun with each other sometimes, the words that they use. And in marriage counseling, wow, people, I just these words that come out of them to each other, I don't know where it comes from. Instead of, you know, they'll be calm and peaceful with a minute, and then the next minute, wow. And they're not living in joy, obviously. So you should never say negative things to yourself. There's enough challenges in this life without you adding you don't have to add to your life and talk negative about yourself. Don't say, I'm dumb. You need to say, I'm smart. Don't say, my business is slow, my finances are down. Say, I'm blessed, I'm successful. Also, don't allow what someone else says about you to tear you down. You need to be what God said you are. And God said, what? You are a masterpiece. That's what God called you. You have to force yourself to, or God, God has already, you know it's, that Satan is, is at work. Don't help him. Don't let him like you feel weak or ashamed or ugly or isolated. Tell him to be gone. In Jesus' name. And allow your negative things to be thrown out and build yourself up with positive. Try it, please. Just try it. Make the goal 24-7. I will think positive. I will talk positive 24 hours a day. And you think, eh. I'll, I can't challenge myself for one week. Good luck. I'll pray for you. You want to try it for one week? Try it. You can. You can, of course you can. You can break old habits, of course. You can, I mean, you can see that glass half empty or half full. You can change, but I want you to try, please. I have a story before we are done. When Jacob was in college, he was studying religion, and he had many opportunities to share with people my personal experience, and he would say, my mother is a pastor. He was very proud of that, that his mother was a pastor. And some of the people would think, oh, that is so cool. A woman pastor, that's cool. And some would say, oh, wow, that's shocking, really? A woman pastor? <laughs> wow, where? Where does she pastor? And he'd say, oh, real proudly, he'd say, oh, she's in it, in Kansas, at a deaf church. And some of them would, would say, a woman pastor? And then when he would say it was a deaf church, they'd say, oh, 
No wonder. I get it. Because, you know, all these churches out here don't require, you know, education. They would look down on that. And think of deaf church. Obviously, they would just take anybody to do that. So Jacob, for four years in college, he would tell me these stories, and I just felt so down, and I would think, well, no, wow, you know, churches are the same here. You deaf churches are the same. There's no difference. I mean, deaf churches require, you have to have a seminary degree as well. And some don't, sure, but, I mean, I just felt so worthless. And then I kept praying and praying and praying and saying, I want to be respected. I want to be respected for what I do. And I would pray about it. And so, I mean, yes, I'm hard of hearing, but yes, I, I'm able to, I want to become a pastor of a hearing church. So do you guys remember? I became a co-pastor of a hearing church. And then at the hearing church, I had a plaque, had my name on it, it said Reverend, engraved in there. And it had all a history of all the different reverends' names, and my name was on there. I was so excited. I thought, I'm finally going to get respect from people now. They're going to know I'm not just a, you know, you know, thinking that just anybody can be there. I have an education. I have degrees. I know what I'm doing. I'm the same as the hearing pastors. It's exactly the same. I wanted to yell that. And then I became a co-pastor of a hearing church. And then I realized, wow, hearing and deaf both have the same problems. It's the same. Everything's the same. Hearing did make, you know, so, sorry. So I thought, oh, no, I want to go back. I want to pastor a deaf church only. These are my people. This is my group of people. I don't like it here. I want to go back. And then finally, one year later, I went back. And I realized we can't allow what people say make us feel bad. We can't allow what people say out there to steal our Christian joy. We need to be renewed, or we are renewed and reborn. We are unique. We are special. We are different. We have skills. And God cherishes and loves us so, so much. And we can't allow the world's talk and comments make us feel lower. We're children of God, and we have power, and we're strong, we have energy, and we know how we can and we want to do anything through Jesus Christ. He gives us the strength to do it. But you have to believe when you see this, it's half full. This is half full, not half empty. Amen? So when you come to the table today, I want you in your hearts, I want you to have your hearts ready to repent and confess and renew and recommit yourself to God and think, I will love myself as much as you love me. I will cherish myself as much as you cherish me. Say that to yourself. Say it to yourself. I, or you created me, I'm your masterpiece. You cherish me, you love me, you think I'm wonderful, I am wonderful. You have to say this to yourself. I want you to say this as you get in line. I want you to repent of your mistakes, of your sin. And I want you to keep your thoughts positive every single day. It doesn't matter your situation or how you feel or what you're doing. Christ did not die for nothing. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ proved his love for us on the cross.